In this video, we consider estimation and inference in vector autoregressive models. Maximum likelihood estimation of vector autoregressive models is very similar to estimation of univariate autoregressive models. So for instance, if we have a vector autoregressive model of order one, then we can write down the the likelihood function. Again, the, the likelihood contributions are given by the conditional density of set t given set t minus one. And we have some model parameters to be estimated, namely theta. These include the constant term mu, the autoregressive matrix pi one, and then the covariance matrix omega of the error terms. The conditional density of set t given set t minus one is based on the multivariate Gaussian density under the assumption that the error term is normally distributed. This conditional density looks as, as follows here, where the epsilon t's are functions of the model parameters and given by set t minus its conditional mean. Note that, as will be clear from the next page, the maximum likelihood estimator for the model parameters is essentially uh, the v squares estimator just in, in, in multiple dimension. So for, for the var k model, we have exactly the same kind of expression for the uh, log likelihood function. Now epsilon t is again given by, by set t minus its uh, conditional expectation. So here we have k lags because it's a var k model and we may write instead of, of this set t minus multiple terms, we may write set t minus phi times set t minus one tilde, where phi is a matrix containing the constant term and all of the autoregressive matrices, pi one up to pi k, and where set t minus one tilde stacks all of the regressor variables. So it stacks the, uh, the constant or a vector of ones, and then the lagged set t's from, from order one up to order k. As I mentioned, the, the maximum likelihood estimator for the model parameters, namely phi and, and omega, is simply the, the least squares estimator. So it's given by, by these two uh, quantities here. So estimating this phi parameter and then um, uh, hence all of the parameters entering the conditional mean simply corresponds to regressing the set t vector on set t minus one tilde. And note here, the coefficients uh, for, for one of the equations in the var k model, say the jth uh, equation, is simply obtained by regressing the jth element of set t, say denoted set t comma j, on a set t minus one tilde. This means that when we estimate a var k model, we can simply just estimate each equation by least squares estimation. In terms of inference, we have essentially the same results as for the autoregressive model. So if the eigenvalues of the com companion matrix are inside of the unit circle, meaning that if we have stationarity and if the epsilon t term the error term is, is IID with mean zero and, and covariance matrix omega, then the, the maximum likelihood estimator is consistent and asymptotically normally distributed with some variance covariance matrix given by a matrix V given by this expression here. Note that the usual test statistics such as the T statistic and the likelihood ratio test statistics and uh, wall statistics and Lagrange multiplier all have the, the standard distributions, either standard normal or, or chi squared under these assumptions here. Uh, so, so it means that we can, for instance, use this result in order to determine the, the number of lags in our model. So we could estimate a bar two and test whether we can leave out all the second order uh, terms. Likewise, we can do uh, misspecification tests, and this is very similar to, to the autoregressive models. Note in particular that the, the error term might be heteroscedastic. In, in this case, this variance covariance matrix is, is invalid 
but we can use a heteroscedasticity robust covariance matrix instead, uh, similar to, to if we have heteroscedasticity in, in linear regression models. In the following, I will give a brief illustration of this. Now, this data set here contains quarterly observations for real GDP in the US and the value of the S&P 500 index. Let us consider the, the, the quarterly growth rates in, in the GDP and in S&P 500 index or the quarterly returns on the S&P 500 index. So these are given by these variables dy and ds. They seem to, to fluctuate around a, a constant level. And in this small empirical illustration, we will consider a bivariate VAR model for, for these two uh, quantities here. We can estimate um, VAR2 model for the growth rate in GDP and the quarterly returns on the S&P 500 index. We can estimate the system. Uh, unrestrictedly, so it simply means that we estimate each equation by, by least squares estimation. And let us just consider the sample from 1990, first quarter, until the fourth quarter of 2018. So here we get the uh, estimation output. We have the equation for the growth rate in GDP and the equation for the quarterly returns on the S&P 500 index. We may inspect the, um, the eigenvalues of the companion matrix. We can do that by um, choosing dynamic analysis. These are the, the four eigenvalues of the companion matrix. No, it, note that it's a, it's a bivariate VAR2 model, so the companion matrix is 4x4. Four four. Recall here that the stationarity condition for the VAR models is that, that the eigenvalues of the companion matrix should be inside of the unit circle. Here we, we have some point estimates of the eigenvalues, and, and these indeed lie within the unit circle. So the point estimates as at least suggest that we have stationarity. Of course, this is not a formal test, but a, a fine indication of stationarity. Going back to the estimation output, we may note that for the equation for the S&P 500 returns, we have some arch effects. So we have some heteroscedasticity. In order to do uh, inference, we may then uh, adjust the standard errors for this heteroscedasticity. So we can estimate the model again and then choose a robust heteroscedasticity consistent uh, standard errors. Okay, these are reported here. Um, we can then try to, to test whether uh, this model can be reduced to a bar one. We can do that by choosing exclusion restrictions. And then we can simply choose to set the, um, the second order lags equal to zero in both equations. So we, we're testing a hypothesis whether this pi two matrix in the bar two model can be set equal to zero. So the, the, this pi two matrix contains four parameters and we test if all of those four parameters are jointly equal to zero. So the test statistic is um, 14.83 um, and this statistic here is a robust wall statistic. So it's a wall statistic based on this heteroscedasticity con consistent covariance matrix for the maximum likelihood estimator. We get a p-value that is extremely small, so this suggests that we should uh, reject the null hypothesis that, that all of these coefficients in the pi-2 matrix can be set equal to zero. So it suggests suggest here that we should keep the, the lag order of two in this VAR model. So we cannot reduce the model from, from a VAR2 to a VAR1. I stated the same estimation output here in, in this slide. Thank you for watching this video.